this ban on uh, recognizing the marriages of same-sex couples here in Florida. Um, this afternoon you're going to hear from uh, a member of the legal team, you're going to hear from uh, representatives from some of the organizations involved, and you're going to hear from uh, some of the families who were represented in the case. Uh, afterwards we'll take a couple of quick questions up here at the podium and then we're going to coordinate uh, with getting one-on-one -on -one interviews as well. Um, some of our folks uh, also are bilingual and speak Spanish. Um, you, we can uh, make sure that you get uh, the uh, interviews you need um, for your audience. Um, also, uh, Carolina Gonzalez in the back of the room from the ACLU of Florida also speaks Spanish, so she can help you out with that as well. Uh, and now uh, to uh, talk about what exactly it was that happened today that has us all so excited, I'm going to turn things over to uh, Howard Simon, who is the Executive Director of the ACLU of Florida. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we have other people that are going to speak and speak in more detail. This is a legally complicated technical matter and we're pleased to have our lead attorney with us. I want to just mention for a moment the, all the lawyers that have worked on, on uh, this matter. Our lead lawyer was from the uh, Potterhurst Horsek firm in, uh, here in Miami and he'll be talking in a moment, Stephen Rosenthal, and he's here with his associate Natalie Levy. Uh, our LGBT staff attorney, uh, Daniel Tilly, is actually an LGBT lawyers conference in New York at the moment. Maria Kayanen, who is our associate legal director, is also on the papers, as is a lawyer with the National ACLU LGBT project, a woman named Leslie Cooper. Leslie Cooper, who you may recall, you may remember her name, uh, five years ago she was the lawyer who was the lead attorney striking down Florida's last in the nation's ban on adoptions by uh, gays and lesbians. So twice now in five years we have won major important LGBT equality victories, adoption and now uh, marriage. Um, I want to say that uh, our case was also joined with uh, the case of uh, two civil rights lawyers that we work with and know very well in Jacksonville, Bill Shepard and Sam Jacobson. The two federal cases were combined and they were the subject of the uh, opinion that was issued this afternoon at about 3.30 by Judge Hinkle. Um, I just want to say ways, a few ways in which, although I think Stephen is going to elaborate on this a little bit, ways in which the case that was decided today is different than the other cases. First of all, our case was a marriage recognition case and not a right to marry. This was a case in which we asked the court to stop Florida officials from refusing to recognize marriages that were performed in states elsewhere around the country. Secondly, our case was the first federal uh, lawsuit in Florida. The other cases were all in the county district courts. And when the stay is uh, ultimately lifted, it will have uh, uh, an impact on uh, couples statewide. And in fact, we represented in this lawsuit couples from all over the state of Florida, in addition to the uh, SAVE organization. Couples from Pensacola, Fort Myers, North Palm Beach, Miami, and, uh, and so on. Um, I, I want to stop now while we can ask, uh, answer questions later, but I think it's important that you hear uh, legally what the judge did. So I'm very pleased and very thankful to get the help from such a distinguished law firm as the Pothurst Law Firm here in Miami to have Stephen Rosenthal with us, fortunately fighting traffic to come up here uh, as our lead attorney in the case. So I'll introduce you to Stephen Rosenthal from the Pothurst Firm. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, and, and I'm standing here on behalf of a legal team that consists of, as Howard said, a lot of really talented lawyers who put an enormous amount of effort into the legal papers that helped convince this judge to rule what we think is in the right direction. Um, Daniel Tilley and Leslie Cooper and Maria Kayanen and Natalie Levy from my office and those other folks from the ACLU. So <clears throat> given the short notice, I'm glad to be here. I wish I had a phalanx of people behind me. Yeah. Let me tell you what the, uh, the essence of this ruling is. You've heard that there have been other rulings in the state of Florida in state courts about right to marry cases. Um, as Howard said, this is not a right to marry case. Our clients are already married. They're legally married in other states. We were joined with another federal case also filed in Tallahassee 
that has some people who ask for the right to marry. The judge has held, the first federal judge in Florida, that the Florida statute and the Florida constitutional provision that say it's illegal to recognize uh, same-sex marriages are unconstitutional. They violate the federal due process clause and the equal protection clause of the United States Constitution. And essentially what that means is that the state can no longer deny same-sex couples the recognition of their marriages from other states. He also granted the right to marry to the couple that was seeking, two couples seeking to be married in the case that we were joined with. In that sense, the case is similar to some other cases that have been decided. But the novel aspect of this case is that it's a federal case. It will be appealed to a different court than the, all the other cases in Florida so far that have been decided. This will be dis appealed to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, which is one step short of the United States Supreme Court. And so what we expect is that the Attorney General, uh, Bondi, will likely appeal this decision to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, and that this case will then be on par with several other Court of Appeals across the country, all waiting for the United States Supreme Court to decide how it's going to resolve this issue that is now bubbling up in courts across the country. A couple uh, legal points that are of note. Even though the judge ruled that these uh, the statute and the Florida constitutional provision are unconstitutional against federal law, he stayed his decision, with one interesting exception. He stayed his decision, meaning that right now, nothing's going to change. He wants to give the Court of Appeals and the state the opportunity to take the case to the Court of Appeals to see whether or not uh, that court, the higher court, will decide the same way he has and affirm his decision. He's also latched this case to several other courts of appeals, the Fourth Circuit, which is the Mid-Atlantic States, and the Tenth Circuit, which is out west, uh, Utah, and Colorado, and Wyoming. Those courts have also stayed their decisions, so they're basically putting this on the same schedule, most likely, that the United States Supreme Court might address the issue. The interesting exception that the judge recognized, and he called it a poignant reason for this type of case being brought, is one of our clients, Arlene Goldberg's spouse, with whom she was together for 47 years, legally married in another state. Give me a have a sore throat. <clears throat> uh, she passed away earlier this year, and because uh, the fact that her spouse was not a man but was a woman, the state of Florida says that she can no longer qualify or she cannot qualify for federal social security benefits. And Miss, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just looking down. Arlene Goldberg is living with her deceased spouse's parents, caring for their those elderly people in a home, and without the social security benefits that she would have gotten from a male spouse, she's having difficulty paying the rent and has been faced with difficulties about whether or not they can keep themselves in the same home. And the judge recognized that those benefits have to be put in place now. The state cannot wait. They need to allow her to get social security benefits so she can do what she needs to do, which is to care for her family, her extended family. Beyond that, um, I think it's interesting, and you all might want to look at the judge's opinion. We've only had an hour to look at it, so this is right off the cuff. But the judge completely rejected the state's defense of why these laws are constitutional. The state had argued that the reason for these uh, laws, thank you, is that they promote uh, uh, marriages that promote um, procreation, that marriage in the state of Florida should be about having children and a stable place to have children. The judge found that rationale to be absurd. He said it was pretextual. He said that it has the suspicion of mendacity and that it blinks reality. And really, these are the judge's words, all the state's defense was about was moral disapproval of same-sex marriage. And the bottom line, if you're going to sum up the judge's opinion, is that he held that a state's moral dis disapproval of whom you're going to marry cannot outweigh the fundamental right to marry. It's the fundamental right to marry. It's not what the state tried to say was this is about the right to marry someone of the same sex. They said the US, Constitu the U.S. Supreme Court has rejected that type of argument back since 1967. It rejected it when the same argument was made about laws in Virginia which said it's illegal to marry people of, the of different races. And they said, no, that violates the fundamental right to marry, not the fundamental right to marry somebody of a different race. Same thing with people who owe child support. Supreme Court banned a law that said you can't marry people, you can't marry if you owe child support. And they also banned laws saying if you're in prison, you can't marry. The fundamental right is the right to marry, and that's what the judge held today. Same rule applies to same-sex couples. And the judge said, quote, the right to marry, to choose one's own spouse, 
is just as important to an individual regardless of whom the individual chooses to marry. So that's the decision. We're very proud of it. The legal team has done hard work and we expect to carry on the fight in the higher courts. Someone is fine, please. Is that, one moment. Are you going to talk about the I'm going to do both. Yeah, yeah. and then we'll have interviews after. Yeah. But the legal? Yes, the part of the legal. When someone says, aunque hablo español, pero no soy hispanoparlante eh, <laughs> originalmente. The, the one thing that I that I failed to say that I want that I wanted to say is that this is a victory, really, for the eight couples around the state on whose behalf we filed it. When this victory is ultimately nailed down, when the stay is lifted, or when the Supreme Court uh, uh, issues its final opinion on this matter, these couples will be able to provide health insurance for their families. Will be able to. Uh, sign up their spouse as a beneficiary of their pension, will be able to provide survivor benefits for their spouse and protect their families and so on. This, this opinion will have a dramatic impact on the lives of families throughout Florida. I want to introduce you now to the executive director of SAVE, which was also a plaintiff in, the, in this lawsuit, Tony Lima. Good afternoon. This is such a momentous day for justice, for, for the community at large. Um, SAVE is so proud to be part of this case because we are actively representing the LGBT community throughout Florida. Um, and, and Howard said this is really, and I congratulate the plaintiffs in this case, and we have some of them here today, but it really is a, a momentous day for all same-sex couples that are married in Florida or people that are hoping to marry very, very soon. Um, I think for SAVE, it, it's important because we've, we've been in South Florida for over 21 years as the active voice of the community. So to be part of this dialogue and be able to help make this happen and bring equality to all of us, it's, it's a really, really, really exciting thing. And it, it goes to show you that after four positive rulings, this is the fifth ruling, the first one in federal court, we're almost at the cusp of being treated as equals. So for us, that's very, very exciting. I want to take some of my time to introduce some of our, our plaintiffs so they can say a few words. Christian Olver. Hi, thank you uh, for joining us today. So my name is Christian Olver. I serve as chairman of SAVE and also one of the plaintiffs. I married uh, my husband last year in Washington, D.C. And today it's one of those uh, bittersweet moments because we have cause to celebrate uh, another ruling of statewide impact that shows that justice is being delivered to hundreds of thousands of Florida residents. Um, but it's also bittersweet because we know what uh, the Attorney General is going to likely do, which is a, a appeal this case, which resulted in that stay issued by the federal judge, um, and that's justice denied. Um, but for us, uh, our journey that uh, took us to Washington, D.C. was a great moment as we celebrated with the people we love our marriage, and it uh, was a day where it was uh, two individuals, my husband, Carlos, and I, saying we love each other and want to take our relationship to the next level uh, through marriage and not government telling us what we can and can't do and worse denying us what we can't do. Um, so it's a great day because justice continues uh, to prevail and the rights of every Floridians uh, continues to be at the forefront. So uh, thank you to all those who join on this cause. Thank you to SAVE and our, our supporters for leading this fight uh, and taking it statewide and to the ACLU uh, for leading the legal, legal fight. Thank you, Christian. And Juan, do you want to say a few words? And his beautiful baby boy, Lucas. <laughs> sí, y yo lo quiero decir en español porque de verdad para mí eh, ese día es bien importante no solo para nosotros como pareja y como, y como familia, pero también para nuestra comunidad. Y reconozco, primero quiero agradecer a LACLU porque no solo nos representaron en este caso, pero sin el caso que ellos ganaron sobre la adopción, no tuviéramos a nuestro hijo Lucas que mi pareja Tommy que adoptamos hace dos años eh, y nomás quiero agradecer a SAVE también yo fui parte en, dos, en el 2007-2008 de tratar de... sabíamos que esta enmienda era discriminatoria y SAVE trabajó bien duro para educar a la gente para que sepan de verdad qué es lo que significaba esto y seis años después por lo menos estamos en las cortes eh, ganando eh, y 
reconociendo que la discriminación no es buena para la comunidad, no es buena para las familias y estamos bien agradecidos de ser parte de este caso. Gracias. So as you see, these are real life cases. These are real people that are being touched by this very important case. So again, thank you to the legal team. Thank you to the ACLU on behalf of SAVE, on behalf of our amazing plaintiffs, and also on behalf of the rest of the community. And SAVE is committed to, to continue after this while we wait for the next ruling to continue making sure that the state is very well aware that it's their responsibility to make sure that we all have the same rights and protections. So, Tony Lima, can you save your name? Yes. You get it in Spanish. <laughs> Tony Lima and I, I'm the executive director of SAVE. No te puedo hablar de la parte legal, porque no soy abogado, pero te puedo hablar porque esto es importante para nosotros. Exacto. Lo que es importante, para, no solamente para nuestros demandantes, pero para la comunidad LGBT en el estado de la Florida, es que hoy eh, estamos haciendo un paso más positivo. Ya han visto cuatro demandas que han sido positivas y ahora esta es la quinta. Y la diferencia es que esta es la primera que representa el estado completo. Los demandantes de nosotros son padres, son parejas jóvenes. Eh, tenemos también una viuda que en estos momentos está ayudando a los padres de su, de su esposa que falleció. Entonces, lo que queremos decir es que es un caso muy, muy importante. Mucha gente afectada por este caso y hoy día es un paso positivo para todos. Y estamos esperando y, y, bueno, esperamos que el Estado haga lo que tiene que ser para que todos tengamos los mismos derechos y, y la misma libertad en todo lo que hacemos. ¿Qué fue lo que se ganó específicamente para las personas que nos han? So, las personas que estén casadas en otros estados pero que residan en la Florida pronto van a tener los mismos derechos que las personas, eh, vamos a decir, el resto de las personas que viven en el estado que están casadas, los mismos derechos y las mismas protecciones que ellos tienen. ¿Con cuáles derechos, por ejemplo? Eh, por, ahora mismo, yo que eh, eh, no estoy casado, pero si estuviera casado con mi pareja, y él está en un hospital, yo no puedo ir a visitarlo. Pueden pasar sus padres, sus hermanos, sus familiares, pero yo no puedo, porque si yo estuviera casado con él en este momento, yo no, yo no fuera visto como si fuera el esposo de él, porque no es legal en la Florida. También para cualquier eh, beneficio de social security, de seguridad social, también esos beneficios, como estas personas que están casadas, ellos no reciben ningún tipo de beneficio. Aunque están casados, igual que puedes estar casada tú o cualquier persona en este cuarto, pero como son personas del mismo sexo y casadas en nuestro estado, eh, no, no se les reconoce su estado matrimonial. ¿Alguien puede hablar de la parte legal? Perdona porque el español es mi idioma primera, pero lo que básicamente el juez ha decidido hoy es que en sumario que el argumento del Estado que en su base es la aprobación desaprobación moral que la desaprobación moral no vale suficiente para, para comprometer el, el derecho fundamental de ser ¿cómo se dice? matrimonio, matrimonio. de matrimonio, lo siento okay. y, y básicamente el, el, el derecho de matrimonio es mucho más pesado que el argumento del Estado para justificar su ley esto fue en, en una un frase lo que el juez hoy declaró. Si tiene más preguntas, yo voy a tratar de, de responder en español. Tratamos todos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Other. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just take a couple of other quick questions and we'll point them to the right person who will be able to answer them and then we'll let y'all do sort of individual questions and we'll set up uh, interviews. Does anybody have uh, any questions at this time? I think we can do one on ones, right? Okay. Just need to get names. That's all. Okay. okay brought it down to a level that people will understand. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, thank you so much for coming, um, and then we'll, we'll work